Hello there, I'm Vinny, and today I'm going to talk how to easily configure uh, Steam called saves for your game. Things are a little bit improvised today. I think that the video quality is not that good, and also the audio, there's some echo in here. But I don't have really much time because I'm about to release my game Farstar, so you can wishlist it on Steam. But as in one of the last steps, I was configuring uh, cloud saves, and um, even though Steam's configuration is pretty good, uh, there were a few caveats or a few details I had to pay attention to, so I decided that it would be nice to, to share with you in case it's helpful. So to start, there are two ways you can save your game files to Steam. You can either use the Auto Cloud, which Steam is going to do the, most of the heavy lifting for you, or you can use the Steamworks API for that. I'll be using Auto Cloud because uh, the features are good enough for me, uh, but I'm going to talk a little bit about the differences as we go. So to configure yourself, you need to go to your Steamworks uh, page, and uh, once you're there, you open your app, and then in application, you're going to find Steam Cloud. The first thing you're going to see is a quota. You need to configure um, how many files you intend to be saving and uh, how big they are. And if you don't configure this thing here, you won't be able to configure stuff down uh, the page. So you can do some math and just put like some conservative number in here and that should be fine. So this other section here is an in cloud sync. And uh, this is not relevant if you're doing uh, things the same method I'm doing, that's uh, the auto cloud. If you're using the Steam Cloud API, uh, then you might be able to enable this one. So if you're not using the Nano Cloud, Steam tries to get the save files before you start the game. And when you close the session, when you close the game, Steam uploads those files uh, back to the cloud. If you open uh, the game, the machine one, and then you suspend the system with the game running, Steam won't allow you to open the game in another machine, even though that first machine is suspended. With the Dynamic Cloud, that's possible because you need to manage those saves yourself using the Steam Cloud API. And I guess if you're just talking about computers, that might sound weird, but now with Steam Deck, if you're playing, you can just like suspend your system and then you might want to resume your session in another computer. But that means that your game needs to be prepared for that. It needs to listen to those events and load the state as you get those events. Not rocket science, but definitely a little bit more work. Um, so yeah, so here, uh, the shared cloud storage is basically if you have a beta or a playtest version of your game and you want those save files to be shared among them. So if you do that, let's say the person uh, played your demo, when they buy the, the full game, they will have their save files available for them. So this is the most important section for us, the Steam Auto Cloud configuration. And here's where you tell Steam where your save files live, where, where you store your save files. There is no mystery in this configuration, but there are some details that uh, I thought it would be nice to share with you. So let me start with the simplest configuration. That's when you save your files alongside of your binary. Like if you have your game executable and then you have like a saves folder, uh, that's the simplest configuration you can have. So uh, in here, uh, I'll click add new auto cloud path. Um, for some reason, Steam refreshed the whole page. So um, as you can see, uh, it comes by default with the app install directory. This is where your binary lives in Steam. In this example, I'm using my playtest app because I've already configured uh, these things for my main app, so I didn't want to mess with that. So uh, this is where Steam uh, stores my binary for my playtest app. Uh, and then a save here is what is configured here. So if you click edit, uh, you can change those things. So if I type save here, um, well, I think only after I save this one, this, this thing is going to be updated. Uh, you can type what di subdirectory your files are and uh, also what's the pattern, like what, what's, the, what's the extension for save files. So it's important to have a save file extension because um, Steam asks to avoid uh, machine specific configurations. So if you have a file to store um, game resolution or audio levels, you don't want to store those things in cloud because this should be specific for each machine. One recommendation here is that you need to have one folder for each user. So if you have multiple users using the same machine, you don't want to save files from one being uploaded to the other's um, Steam Cloud. So this is the only configuration you have to change in your game, being able to identify what's the current user. So in here, in this path, uh, if I open the documentation here, uh, the documentation kind of uh, shows a few examples of things we can do. So, and it provides some path variables we can use. So here it shows where each, um, which root folder maps to, uh, but this is what we are looking for. You see this 64-bit stream ID? This is the, the, the user ID in Steam, like the long one. So if I copy this one here, um, I'll do saves, slash, and then the 64-bit stream ID. Um, I'll, our operation system is not recursive, so if I update this one, um, now what's going to happen if, <laughs> now what's going to happen is that all save files will be saved under this folder here uh, that has the user's account. So this thing will guarantee that you're not mixing uh, files from different users. So this is all the configuration you need if you're saving your files alongside your binary. But many games uh, don't do that. Like uh, my game, actually, I chose to just save on the config folder. So I'm going to change this one to be this configuration specific folder. So what you need to do, you need to change the root folder for uh, whatever configuration folder you use. 
And those folders, they are operational system specific. So it will be different in Linux, different in Windows, and different in um, Mac OS. You need to choose one operational system to be the default one. It doesn't really matter, but um, just choose whatever you're using as your default. I usually choose the Linux one because this is the one that I work in my day to day. XDG data folder, I think it's the, the .local slash something. Uh, actually, this can be different depending on the Linux system, but it doesn't really matter. And uh, in here, uh, I know that my game, it maps to Farstar. That's my game's name. Uh, and I will still keep the 64-bit stream ID. And here's one detail. If you start this configuration using um, the Linux data home, this thing is going to come with Linux and SteamOS by default. And you don't want that. You want this to be all OSs because you're going to override that for the other uh, operational system. And all the configurations are the same. So if I update here, you see that now, uh, yeah, now it's saying, oh, this is the XDG data home, and then uh, this is my new thing. So now we need to configure to the other operational systems because uh, if you see here, this one saying that this is not uh, cross-platform. And here's one detail, like you might think that you, what you need to do is add another cloud path here, but that's the wrong way because if you do this, what you're telling Steam is that each one of those folders are different folders, and that's not what you want. You want to come to this, other section here, just for, for the refresh. So this other section here that root overrides. And it's a pretty simple configuration. You come here and then that's so annoying. This, this refresh is so annoying. So first you need to pick what root you want to override. And in my case is the Linux data home. Uh, and that's it. So what operational system this override is going to be applied to? Windows. So where it maps on Windows. And um, it depends on your engine. It depends on your game, where you use. I know that the engine I use, Gato, uh, save this on the Win app roaming. And that's the equivalent one to the Linux one. So coming back. So here you see the preview. It's mapping this one on Linux to this one on Windows. And if you check here, this one now it's marked as cross-platform. Uh, you can do the same for Mac OS. So again, if you are if you're using Goda, I think the, the Linux data home in Micro OS is the I think library Mac App Support. This is usually the equivalent. Uh, again, check your engine, check uh, your own game to see uh, where it's being saved in macOS. And that's it. So if I save here, again, it's going to show the mappings are right. And that's all you need from a Steam point of view. After that, you need to go to publish and publish your chains. Uh, once you do that, um, your Steam cloud should be working. So before I show you how to configure this in my game, uh, I'm going to show you another thing that might help you with your uh, troubleshooting in, ca in case you're having problems. So, so Steam keeps a lot of logs. And um, if you can see here in my uh, operation system is .steam, steam, and logs. Uh, depending on your operation system, it's a different place. Look at uh, Steam's uh, documentation to, to find it. And this one, what you're looking for is the cloud log. So if I open this file, it's a text file. And this will give you some useful information on what's going on with your saves. Like here, you say you see like it tells you where the backup is. It says what files are in sync or not. So yeah, so this file should be uh, useful information in case something goes wrong with your app. Um, now let me talk about the, the engine side of the thing. So if you're using Goto, uh, there are two details I want to go over here. So the first one is if you're, if like me, you are using the user folder. So this one Goto maps to the user configuration folder. If you're using this folder, by default, Goto saves as in the app data or the Windows roaming and saves as a goto slash your project name slash and then whatever you put in there. And you can actually replace that. Like if you go to application config, there are those two options here. So use custom user gear, you need to check this one. Uh, this one is going to set a custom name for that goto, the, the first one. And then you set whatever you want. In my case, I set Farstar. This is the one we configured on Steam just before. And uh, one detail is that even though Godot is going to create that custom folder, it, it's not going to create the user-specific folder we were talking about. So when you initialize your game, you need to check if the directory exists. And if it doesn't, you need to create it yourself. So another thing is that I have this save subfolder. By default, it's just default. But uh, when I'm running it on Steam, if you saw my last video about achievements, I'm using Godot Steam. So this is a method from the Steamworks API that gets the user ID. And this happens to be the same 64-bit ID we set in our path in Steam, on Steam. So this will guarantee that my files will, are saved to the right place. So yeah, so that's all you need in your game. You don't need anything else. You just need to uh, set up the right folder depending on the user. And on Steam, you need to add this configuration here. I hope that was useful. I know that the quality, the sound quality and the video quality is not that good. If you like it, just thumbs up, uh, consider subscribing to the channel and wish this far side because far side is coming on October 23rd soon like a few weeks two weeks away and uh yeah i hope uh, you enjoy see ya